Hello guys and welcome, it is the SRB2Dude here today, bring you yet another episode of Dr. Dude. Here we are with a patient known as Drift, and he is using the Slosher Deco on Inkblot Clamblitz, I believe this is at S plus level. Now there are a few things that I can take away from this game in order for all of us to become better players at Splatoon. And the first thing I want to mention is this very part right here, where you challenge the Octobrush, but then begin to run out of ink. Now when you get into a situation when you're very low on ink, it's best to just get out of the situation just in general instead of recharging a little bit of ink just to try and challenge the person, especially when they have higher ground on you. Especially when you're using something like a slusher where you need to hit your next two shots. Considering when you recharged ink, you only had enough for two slosh. In general, sometimes it's best to back up, play it safe, and position yourself where you can slosh within your furthest range. It's also good to point out that it is the start of the game, so you don't have to play too risky at the very start, just play a little bit more conservative. Make sure to get your special to, you know, get the real push going. Eventually you do back up, and I kind of want to point this out as well, is that once you did back up, somebody did chase. And this is something that a lot of close range weapons are most likely going to do. So as you can see the, on the other team, they have an Octobrush, Enzap, and Perry Dooleys, and Splatbrella. And with the Slosher Deco, you already know that you have more range than all of these players on the other team. So really in general, unless the Octobrush or the Imperies have used an Inkjet, then you don't exactly need to rush them down unless you're using your Baller. You can safely just back up, and if they're chasing you, Make sure to hit them while you're backing up, so you'll be able to hit them from a safe distance. Now the next thing I kind of want to point out from your gameplay is noticing when to go in for clams. Now during this point, you just rushed into the middle when there's already two people in the middle on the other team, and you go for these four clams right here. Now, this is not the play to make, I'm just going to say that now, you, you do not want to make plays like this, especially once the enemy team on Inkblock especially has map control in the middle. I always say the points that you want to collect clams is once you already have some control of the map or you have taken two people down on the other team and you have some sort of man advantage. With this play that you made, you are pretty much punished for making a power clam as they noticed you as you dropped down. And once you tried to sneak away, they rushed you down straight away, which led to you pretty much dying. As you respawn now, the exact opposite thing happened. So as I was just saying, now you have man advantage on the other team. So you have four players up and there's only two players on the other team. You make it even worse for them by taking out one guy. So in this situation, you decide to pick up clams, which is exactly what you want to do. In situations like this, when you have man advantage in clam blitz, you want to paint the map, you want to get clams and you want to attempt to proceed forward. You may want to think about painting a map a little bit more since you didn't exactly do that too much, but it's just something for you to note down. Now, picking clams up is one thing, but I just want to shortly explain why you paint the map while you are playing clam blitz. And the reason is because it's simple, you get special out of it, so as the other team is coming back from spawn, you should have all your specials ready to make another push to further pressurize them. Now in this situation right here, you're on the left block, but you see an Octobrush in higher ground right here, and he starts to wave a lot of ink raining down on you. Now you make the decision to actually jump out, which I applaud, mainly because you wasn't going to win that situation right there, con considering how much suppression was on you. And just by that, you're able to save your special, considering that the enemy team had pushed right back in, considering the map wasn't painted enough. I also want to mention he had a couple clams, he had about three clams, but that's okay. If he did have a power clam or something like that, I'd say the best thing for him is to throw it first and then jump out. And mainly because if you throw it first, then it's not going to break as fast. But if you jump back with the power clamp to spawn, the power clamp is going to break, obviously. So the reason why you might want to throw it is just because your teammate may be able to follow through or help you out after you've jumped out and then retrieve the power clamp you just threw so you won't be down one. Now, as you jump back to spawn, I kind of want to mention this as this is something that kind of happened throughout the entire game. Every single time you were in spawn, basically, if you died or just jumped back to spawn, you open the map. Now, of course, that's a good thing that, you know, you're going back in and you're retrieving a little bit of information. But the thing is, is that I don't feel like you open the map enough while you're just generally playing. Also, once you're checking the map, I don't feel like you're pointing out what's actually happening on the map quick enough. Because once you pull up the map, you can notice that there's ink being developed on the right and there's ink being developed on the, I guess, the little block coming up to your basket. There's also one player that's sharking underneath the basket, but eventually dies as soon as you turn off the map. So with that information, we're able to spot at least three people. So there's one coming on the right and one coming onto the left. So you go downwards and you land on your plat. You should already know that there's one guy coming to your right. So you shark a little bit and then you notice the brella and then your team tries to deal with them. 
But the thing is, is that you forgot that there was one person still on the left, which the map did tell you, but you didn't spot it already. Now, it kind of looks like an unfortunate situation, but it can be prevented by making sure that you notice these little things that happen on the map. Now, this is generally why, personally for me, I try to pull up the map as much as I possibly can, to try to build up as much information as I possibly can. The map is a super helpful tool for spotting people. And of course, sometimes arrows on the map aren't just going to pop up all the time, but it's really easy to spot people once they're inking. So if you're able to notice little things like that, then it should be super helpful for you to notice where everybody on the map is. So we're coming back in here and we notice that there's somebody on the platform. And I go applaud this play because you pretty much waited, you spaced this person now, and you also had a teammate's help and this Octobrush on your team decided to help you straight away Once you noticed that he was challenging him you went in for the kill which I applaud and that's a great way to do team plays and making sure to you secure kills on people You then notice that there are two power clams coming towards your basket which you should probably deal with now You need to be really quick with this as three people get taken down as you get your first assist and also what happens is rain is already being developed. Now you already have two teammates defending already. You already know that the rain is going in the direction of where that uh, first power climb is going. So the thing is, you need to make sure that you're in a position that you're going to be safe. You know, you don't die to the rain cloud and you might want to have to rely on your teammates here. Instead, you make the decision to actually try to challenge the per last person with the power climb, but then die for it because you're in the rain. Personally, I feel like because of the position of your teammates, they should be able to defend it. And also taking note that the mentality of the enemy team. There were already three people taken down on their team. So that person with the power glam is the very last person. So even if they get a power clam in, they're not going to get any more points other than that first 20. So there's pretty much two things that they're going to do. They're either just going to back up and give it up or get a power clam in getting 20 points, which will also give you an extra power clam. Or the bonus answer would be go in and die because your teammates were pretty much protecting the basket. Now, this is something to point out in the long run in situations like this is that like if the scores in clan bits are 100 to 100 and no one has really scored and then if you get to like the very end of the game and it's still 100 100 or if the NA team scores one power clam and it's at getting to the very end of the game while you have a power clam at overtime. Now, just think about it. Considering you have two ballers on your team, Sasha Deco and Aerospray or Gold Aerospray, it will be easily doable to make sure that you get the last few points because all that will require is a baller to the basket with one power clam with one person super jumping with a power clam to you and just one clam to be put in that will pretty much win the game just with that play in overtime so in situations when it's just 100 100 i just say the best thing to do is just be patient don't feel like you have to score straight away unless you've killed all of the people on the enemy team or unless you're in a good enough spot to put clams in now back to the game unfortunately once you died everybody on your team decided to say that you know what we're just all gonna die to this one guy that had the power clam so in this situation, the person comes back and throws a power climb in, which is still okay since they only get the 20 points in. But right now, all I feel like you need to focus on is just getting map control and making sure that you're defending your basket well. Now, it could have been a thing where you just didn't want to depend on your teammates anymore, so you decided to use your baller and solo push it, which again, is I don't feel like is the right play. And the main thing is because of how the situation looks. Now, they have 25 clams, you have two people down. If you decide to ball all the way to the other side, then the other team can literally just throw a power clam, making your push pretty much irrelevant. And this is pretty much exactly what they did, since when you got to the other side, they decided to start scoring points. Now, fortunately, as you die, your teammates defend really well and wipe the entire team away. At this point, as you're spawning in, the enemy team still has a lot of map control. So they're going to be able to get in pretty quickly and reclaim the middle of the map. So you need to make sure to paint the map and also spot people as they're coming in. You can do this by, of course, using your eyes while playing, or I say the best way is to use the map. Now, after you spend some time deciding to pick up the clams or the power clam or whichever, honestly, I feel like you're wasting time at this point. Because at this point, I'm pretty sure the enemy team has reclaimed the middle again as the duelies comes up and takes you out just right there. And after the minute mark, I believe it's just a massive snowball at this point. 
where your teammates are just somewhat panicking as they're just trying to go in by themselves to try and pick up clams because the time is ticking down. Everybody's going in one by one to try and do it, do everything themselves instead of actually working together as a team, which is of course really hard to do in solo queue, but that's pretty much what I'm taking from this very last part here. I understand how bad solo queue can be at times, especially when your teammates don't want to work together or actually your teammates noticing each other. But the thing is, I generally believe that people become better at this game or better at solo queue in general once they are noticing the movement of their teammates. If you notice more on how they're positioned and how they move around the map, if they're defending, if they're wanting to push, if they're wanting to get map control and such like that. If, if you're able to notice how they move and you're able to work around it, honestly, I feel like you would become much better at solo queue. Clan Blitz in solo queue is probably one of the hardest modes for sure, without a doubt, considering in competitive, there's so much team play behind it. But with modes like this, I feel like it's really good because it's going to be able to help you to expand your knowledge on good team plans and just being able to quickly respond to your teammates motives and such like that all in all in this game partly i feel like you could do better with the things i told you partly your teammates had a few faults in consistency with doing things but we're not going to try and blame them all the time because in general we're trying to improve ourselves here and not the people on our team we're trying to be better players ourselves and work on how we can do things better if you want to get the greatest ranks you're not going to get it being carried so the best thing for us is to be able to learn from them as mistakes trial and error and make sure that it doesn't happen again if we familiarize ourselves with these situations again but pretty much that's what I gotta say with your gameplay drift. Thank you very much for sending it in. I hope all of this was helpful for you in some way. And I also hope that you guys watching this right now, you know, I hope it helped you in some way. I hope it broadened your knowledge a little bit about Clan Blitz and Solo Queue and such like that. So, you know, all I gotta say is thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did like this video, please like, favorite, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Follow me on Twitter and Twitch, both in the description below. Do it for both of you for feeling generous. And as always, guys, this has been that SRB2 dude, and I shall see you guys in a future video.